Life without Tom Brady, a nightmare that is soon to become reality for our New England Patriots fans the world over, myself included. And in this series, it is going to become a reality sooner rather than later. Now, I have been asked for a couple of years now to do a franchise mode with the Patriots, even though, as you'll know if you follow me for the NHL stuff, I don't normally like doing series with my favorite teams. I prefer to use other teams. But I had been asked enough, whether on Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, all ready for Madden 20, hey, use the Patriots. So, that is exactly what we are going to do. Odds are we have one season left of the greatest quarterback of all time, that is not up for discussion, by the way, before he retires, and from there, we will have to look to move on. For this season, the goal is simple. Try to win one more, try to win a seventh ring for the greatest, and then we look to move on and keep this team competitive over the next few years. Rebuild on the fly, if you want to call it that, is the game plan moving forward. Now, in terms of this series, we are going to try and keep some things quote-unquote realistic. I'm not going to go out and trade for Baker Mayfield. I'm not going to be like, oh, okay, well, who's, who's the best quarterback right now? I mean, in fairness, you, you already know it's Patrick Mahomes. He's the cover boy. I'm not going to go out and try to trade for Mahomes. I'm not going to trade for Russell Wilson. No, we are going to take this as a slow and steady approach. I'm going to try not to rob the AI of their already established players. Draft picks, on the other hand, we'll see because trading is still broken in this game. And free agency, well, that's fair game. But for the most part, we will be taking it slow and steady. It's not a true draft of glory like we've done in the past, like we did last year. As a matter of fact, the Arizona Cardinals. But again, a slow and steady approach as we look to keep this team relevant, as they should be. 20 years of relevancy isn't enough. You get to suffer for another 20 if I do my job well. So in terms of what we are looking at here and in terms of how I'm going to handle this series, if you have watched me play through Madden, or at least on you know Madden 18 and Madden 19 over the past few years, you'll know that we are very sim heavy here. We won't be playing a ton of games. It's more about... Can I build a team that the Sim Engine likes to see be successful? That is the plan. If you want to see me play the game a little bit more, I'm also currently running a Miami Dolphins series on Twitch. We're already five or six seasons into that already because, well, when your team's garbage, it's not worth playing the games and it's just worth getting to the draft until the team's good. But yeah, that, that is how we're going to handle it for the most part. So as far as this episode is concerned, it's pretty much short and sweet. Just a quick setup episode. We do have to finalize this roster. Uh, when it comes to the settings, and I mean, you know, I'll show you how everything's set up for now. Again, if we were to play, it would be on All Pro because I heard that All Madden's still broken. At least that's how I've been handling it. But that is how everything is set up on that front. And when it comes to sliders, of course, I'm not going to do anything XP slider-wise. They are the base sliders. Whether or not certain, you know, positions still don't develop all that well, hey, you know, we'll see. I mean, from my experiences thus far, yeah, and especially, too, with the lower overalls that we've seen this year, you know, they've made that change. They haven't made many changes that ultimately end up affecting franchise mode. But as far as how everything's set up now with the lower overalls, I feel like the player development is more in line with what you would think. We are, of course, listed as an owner as well. We've gone through, fully upgraded the stadium, which is why the funds are so low, because screw it, I like a challenge, and being a little bit broke is fine by me. We also signed the best staff, of course, that we could for now, because why bother with a subpar coach? So with that, let's take a look at the roster, because as much as I'd like to, I mean, we could rob the free agent list a little bit if we wanted to. I don't know if we're going to do that. Quarterback-wise, I mean, we might as well run with Jared Stidham as the backup quarterback. Cut Brian Hoyer. There's no penalty to do so. We're only going to run two quarterbacks as it is. So, Brian, I love you. But, yeah, you're, you're gone. We're going to free up that money. And Danny Etling in real life has been moved out to wide receiver. 
I'm just going to cut him for now, too. In terms of what roster we're using, we're just using the default EA roster with the one exception of me lowering Ryan Shazier's or Shazier's overall because, I mean, come on. I, I would honestly hate to see that guy ever play football again because I'd be so concerned about him. It's amazing that he's still walking and healthy. But, yeah, he's the only other guy. If there's anybody that I missed in terms of that, let me know. But, yeah, for the most part, that is our quarterback setup. Running back-wise, oh, God, we'd have to take a bit of a penalty here. I don't know. I don't necessarily want to Don't necessarily want to carry five running backs. We'll come back to that situation. Might end up having to make a, an immediate move here or two. Fullback-wise, James Devlin, best in the, best in the world. Wideout-wise, still not a bad setup. Still weird to know that Demarius Thomas is now a member of the New England Patriots. But we do have quite a few guys here. Uh, that we would have to drop, and penalties are included. So perhaps we'll try to wait as long as we can before cutting people. I don't necessarily want to immediately deal all of these guys for extra draft picks, but that is the possibility. Tight end-wise, Lance Kendricks being there is almost a necessity. And again, unfortunately, we have a lot of guys here where there's just... Oh, these penalties. Joe Cardone, at the very least, you, you gotta go. Like, I'm not even gonna be able to trade you, so, yeah, you're you're out, buddy. We'll, we'll save a little bit of money on that front. We're, we're gonna, you know what? I'm already, I'm already gonna call it. I'm already gonna decide it. We're just gonna take the cat penalties, for the most part. I'm not gonna flip a bunch of players to the AI. We'll spare the AI, draft pick-wise. When it comes to the free agent list, there are some options that are rather interesting and that could help the team. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And anybody we do sign will be keeping for the season. I don't want to sign Des Bryant and then flip him for a first-round pick, right? We're going to try to avoid fleecing the AI via trading because, let's be honest, it is incredibly, incredibly easy to do so. So Damian Harris, I want to keep, but what is, what's his development pattern? It's normal, huh? Ugh. That is... That is unfortunate. Brandon Bolden, at the very least, you, you gotta go, buddy. We'll save a little bit of money by uh, by getting rid of you, which is fine by me. And we'd save we'd save two million if we were to cut Rex Burkhead, which is probably probably what we'll do. I mean, with White and Michelle, we're already looking pretty good. The issue with Damian Harris is he's just he's never gonna play. When is he ever gonna play? Unless there's an injury, but. We'll cut Rex Burkhead for now as well. Hate to see him go, but he's on the way out. Wide out wise, we're only going to carry five options. So Inman is going to be out because Henry obviously needs to play. So Dontrell, get out. Get out. Matthew Slater, I love you so much. But for the sake of Madden, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to keep you. It really doesn't. Uh, Braxton Berrios is also going to be... On the way out. Sorry, buddy, but you're gone. And from there, yeah, Maurice Harris is the last one out. That's pretty pretty straightforward in terms of who to get rid of at wide receiver. Those will be the five that we use. We'll probably have Harry ahead of Dorsett, uh, more than likely on the depth chart, just to try and get him a little bit more playing time. And tight end-wise, I guess we'll keep Izzo. We'll keep Izzo. He's a blocking uh, specialist. More, uh, at least I think he is. He should be in the game, Izzo. Yeah, that is his highest rating. So that works for me. The O-line. Oh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun to sort, isn't it? Oof. 50 overall for Renz, huh? In fairness, we really only need one other guy on the O-line, and the O-line itself is fine. We just need a, right, you know, a backup right guard, and aside from that, we're good, so... Let's go see who we can find. Still rocking an 82 overall as a team, which is looking good for me. All right, guard-wise, we don't need to sign bowling. That is that is overkill. Who is very cheap? Jason King out of Purdue. Let's sign Jason King for the year. We have just under $20 million in cap room, which is good because we're going to have to use that heading into next year in terms of re-signing people anyway. Not exactly... Excited to be like, oh yeah, $20 million in space. Let's immediately spend it. Now, let's, let's take our time. Uh, Derek Rivers or Calhoun. Calhoun's probably going to be on the way out. Although Davis, 25. and a, Yeah, I think Calhoun is going to be gone. Davis, probably gone as well. Pretty straightforward. We'll have Rivers as the depth option there. Getting Winovich to develop. Luminovich. 
is going to be fairly important. I don't know how likely he is to develop, but we can play him over Dietrich Wise if necessary, because Wise is only normal development. Although, I think Winovich... Uh, Winovich. No, he is hidden. Okay. Yeah, he'll definitely be playing them. That's pretty straightforward. Decent depth there. Defensive tackle. Defensive tackle. Pretty straightforward. Adam Butler is going to be cut. And we're also going to drop David Perry. Normal development for the 27-year-old. And last but not least... Oh, I like Howard, but... Normal development, he's only a 63. It's it's just not worth the keep him. He's never going to develop for us. Unless he gets one of those special moments, which is really the only thing that they have changed for franchise mode. Uh, you know, just in terms of player development and those special games where players can take that next step up in terms of development pattern. But even then, he has so far to go, it isn't likely to happen. Linebacker-wise, amazing to see Jamie Collins back. For the Patriots, and middle linebacker-wise, Calvin Munson is going to be dropped. Pretty straightforward. Corners, we're going to look to carry five. So, Ken Webster, same thing. Decent enough rookie, but he's on the way out. Not really worth keeping. And, I mean, cutting Williams. He's a rookie, though. That, that's, that's not going to work for us. Could cut J.C. Jackson or Jonathan Jones. It's going to be Crossan, who's on the way out as well. So I still like the initial setup for this team. We're looking pretty good. A.J. Howard obviously gone. Pretty straightforward. And in terms of the other safeties, we do have Brooks. We also have too many, too many people. Too many people. I was going to say, uh, I don't know what the hell I was going to say to be honest. Uh, Nate Ebner, love you. Love you so much. But you, you gots to go much like Mr. Slater, you gots to go. So there we go. We'll have to deal with some cap penalties, but overall the savings decent enough. And even then, I'm not against having to deal with some cap penalties. Jake Bailey will be dropped as well. Allen's still the man for us as our punter. Draft pick-wise, we do have Chicago's fourth and Philly's seventh heading into this first year. So if I'm not mistaken, that'll bring us down to actually 52. Where do we cut one too many players from? I guess I could bring back another wide receiver. Matt Slater, you're coming back. You're coming back. Yeah, I mean, we have our five there. Corners, we had our five as well. I cut one too many players, and I'm not sure who. It could be another outside linebacker. Where's Matthew Slater? We need to bring him back. <laughs> Screw bringing in any improvements, although we definitely could. I mean, quarterback, we don't need to do anything. Running back, we don't need to do anything. I mean, Madden, he's not even a better fullback. Like, we could bring in Des Bryant. It's not going to help that much. Kelvin Benjamin's there. It's really not going to help that much. I'd rather let the AI fill out their rosters with players like that. Let them get the early advantage, even if it means we're not all that successful. Sferian Jenkins is one hell of an initial pickup if we wanted him to be the guy. But, like I said, I think we'll hold off. I don't want to immediately rob the free agent list of everybody that there is available. We'll let the AI kind of get the heads up on those players. But once we hit free agency at the end of the first year, it's fair game. And we're going after anybody and everybody that appears in that Dolphins run. We picked up Miles Jack in first year free agency, and he is the greatest player in Madden history. <laughs> Move over, Bo Jackson. Well, in fairness, Bo Jackson. Greatest player in football history, of course, Bo Jackson being Tecmo. But you get the point there is nobody that I want to go for. We are going to stick with this roster. We're up to 53. 82 rated, 87 offense, 79 defense. Mainly thanks to Tom Brady leading the way. So running back-wise, White and Michelle. I mean, Sony's, Sony's more important to the future. We're going to set that up with Sony Michelle being the main guy. Running back-wise, wide out-wise, uh, we're going to have Harry over Dorsett. Pretty straightforward with Slater. Also there as an option. Somebody... Oh, that's what it is. We have an injury at wideout, don't we? That's exactly what it is. Am I missing a pre-existing injury? I must be. Aha, they have Josh Gordon out. Is he out, like, permanently? As in, like, oh yeah, we're replicating that he's suspended. How long is Josh Gordon out for? Oh yeah, he's, he's just done. Does he have a torn peck in real life? Did I miss that? 
All right, cool, so we don't have Josh Gordon. Getting a better wideout wouldn't be the worst idea, actually. We still won't do it, though. Uh, we'll run with Edelman, Thomas, and Harry as the top three because we want Harry to develop, as we mentioned. So aside from that, we're looking good. We don't really need to do too much else. Feeling good about the O-line setup, especially with Shaq Mason there. Defensive-wise, I mean, again, Bennett is going to be the starter. And on the right-hand side, we're going to put Owinovich as the starter. So Wise will be the backup there, Simon the backup. That's weird how they reversed, but that's fine. Lawrence Guy and Danny Shelton at defensive tackle should be able to do the job. And the linebacker-wise, unless I'm missing somebody, there's no one that we have to worry about making sure that they start corner-wise. It would just be Williams that I was worried about, but Jones and Jackson also young enough that they could still develop. So I think we're looking good. So obviously with this first season, it's kind of a eh, setup because I, like, I get it. We're going to be competitive. You'd like to think this team is going to be good. And yeah, we're taking over the defending Super Bowl champions. Granted, we're without Gronkowski, but we're taking over the defending champions. We are likely to still be competitive. So some of the initial interest can be down, but again, Brady's going to be gone at the end of that first year. And if we struggle to find a quarterback, it is going to be rough. I have already seen how much importance this game puts on quarterbacks. The answer is a lot, as we get an upgrade point already for Jason King, who's a random depth option. So we'll auto-assign that. Not too worried about him. See what happens here against Tennessee. But quarterbacks are gigantic. And there's an injury. You watch. It'll be to Brady. It's not. It's to Philip Dorsett. He's out for seven weeks, and already the wideout depth is going to be tested early on. Isaiah Wynn will be making it up to a 74, likely, although I do want to double-check the scheme fit. That's actually the one thing that I did not do. So some solid options here. We'll end up seeing how good Harry is. It is a hidden option there, or hidden option, hidden potential. Same for Winovich and, of course, Gilmore there as well. But let's take a look. Let's take a look at the schemes here, shall we? Let's see what we have. So vertical power run, what is our highest rated option? 78 for the zone run. Uh, so, yeah, we'll go vertical zone run. And then we're going to change the playbook just outright to the New England playbook. More than likely... And let's see what we have in terms of scheme fits on defense. 83 for the 3-4. 83 for the 4-3 cover 3. And 87 for a 3-4 under. So it'll be the 3-4 under that we roll with, which is good, because that also goes in line with the Patriots' defensive playbook. How we are first in value with that little in funds, I have no idea. But I will take it. So Isaiah wins now a scheme fit, and we'll make him better as the agile type and that gets him up to a 74 overall the plus three in run block finesse so a decent little start there let's get to the end of the preseason at the very least and see what this team's looking like an undefeated preseason thus far james white looking like he's going up to an 87 will make him better as an elusive back and indeed up to an 87 overall not a player i expected to improve at this point He's still just 27 years old. And the other two random filler options on the O-line that are not likely to last. Our final preseason game against the Giants. We win that one as well. Of course, we open the season against the Steelers, although we do have some point improvements as well. Shaq Mason, let's make you better as the Agile type. It won't get him up to an 89, but that's okay. Uh, pass block and run block Finesco up, which is fine by me. J.C. Jackson already improving. Same thing. We'll make him better as a slot option. Doesn't get him up to his 76, but we'll get him closer to being a scheme fit for the year. Still 23 years old. And Mike Pennell Jr. Make him better as a run stopper. That gets him up to a 73 overall. So a pretty efficient and effective preseason for us. Undefeated. Some good improvements. And I think... Because I want to have your input here before we move forward. I think that's where we're going to end it for this one. 
Like I said, want to hear from you guys. Let me know what you think in terms of suggestions for this series, how to handle certain things. Again, we are likely to go week by week in terms of jumping into the sim, seeing what happens, especially if there are any interesting moments towards the end of a game. And if we are competitive, even if we're not, kind of leaving it up to you guys, open-ended in terms of how much we sim through this first season. I'd completely understand if people said, hey, I don't really care for the first season. I just want to see what happens once Brady's gone. So let me know down in the comments below. I thank you very much for checking out this video, and I will see you guys in the next one where our journey with the Patriots begin. Can we keep them relevant, and can we send Tom Brady off to retirement as a champion? I hope so. It's what he deserves, because he's the greatest. Thank <laughs> you.